supposed to be speaking this morning. Uh, our brother Joseph is supposed to be speaking. No, you are all aware that Joseph uh, has had some, some health issues. He is, um, he is very much better, I can tell you that. And so, as a, as a mentor told me many years ago, you must be prepared to preach, to pray, and to die. So I said to Joseph and I said to Adam, uh, I'll take this morning, and Joseph might take my slot in February or, or March. So, uh, Lord, please be with us. Help me as I speak. Uh, help us to hear your word. We pray this in your son's name. Uh, it's, it's pretty obvious that I'm not a still guy. I'm not a calm guy. I'm not an introvert. I'm not a library guy. Those who know me, it's pretty obvious. I do not like this, this pulpit. I feel like I'm in a little bit of a jail cell. I feel like I need to move. So if I go this way, that's going to topple. If I go this way, the computer's going to topple. I'm a guy who was, if, if, if I lived in America now as a kid, I would be heavily medicated. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the 60s. <laughs> Thank you. It is hard for me to be still. It's hard for me to be still up here. It's hard for me to be still here. And it's really hard for me to be still here. I just say whatever comes out. <laughs> Getting all sorts of trouble for it. When I became a Christian, I realized that there was an alternative. When I met Jesus, I realized that Jesus could bring calm in a storm. That Jesus could give some clarity in a world that was clearly a mess. Because I don't need to tell you that life is full of unrest. <clears throat> that li life is crazy. Some of you come from countries where, where maybe all you've known is unrest. All you've known is, 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 to use kind of biblical language, the seas foaming and the waves roaring. There's political unrest. There's economic unrest. There's social unrest. That's the world we live in. And that's the world the Bible comes from. So in honor of Reformation Day a couple days ago, now I gotta be honest, when somebody said, do we know what day it was today? I was about to shout out Halloween, and I'm really glad that I <laughs> did not, because that's, I said, I was gonna say Halloween. <laughs> Remember, I'm not a still guy. Halloween, yeah. <laughs> he works here? This is a great song. And it's a psalm that many of us know because it's a great psalm. And it's a psalm that many people know because Martin Luther wrote a great hymn based on this psalm that many of us have sung. And, and, and let me read you this famous psalm. Right? God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Now I've got uh, news for you. Uh, I, I said to our illustrious chaplain, um, I may need a little bit of extra time because I'm giving two sermons that I'm mushing into one. And he just laughed, which was, I think, the appropriate response. <laughs> I want to very quickly look at this passage. And then I want to tell you a story. Okay, so get ready. Martin Luther said, we sing this psalm to the praise of God because God is with us 
and powerfully and miraculously preserves and defends his church and his word against all fanatical spirits, against the gates of hell, and against the implacable hatred of the devil, and against all the assaults of the world, the flesh, and sin. What a great quote, despite, Martin, all the run-on sentences. I'm just saying that, but don't worry about it. This psalm is so full of great promises. God is our strength, not the political structures of this world. Yeah, I, I, have, I have been here so long, and I remember the 60s, and we all thought it was going to get better. I'm thinking, I'm thinking America in the 60s, which was really a time of turmoil. I, I can remember 1968 and 1969. That may not mean anything to some of us, but pivotal years of turmoil in America. I can remember those years, and we say, it's going to get better. No, it's not. Our only hope is God, who is our strength and refuge. And these words are great. We're not going to fear. God, even though the waters, God is there. And there's this river of life flowing through this tumultuous world. The Lord Almighty is with us. Do these words, Old Testament scholars, echo Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14? Maybe they do. They stand at the Red Sea. They've got the Egyptian army behind them. And Moses says, do not be afraid. Stand firm. The Lord will fight for you. Just be still. Just be still. And so I, I ask us at the end of the first half of this sermon, are we still? Now, this doesn't mean be still and wait for God to show up. In our context in Canada, that's how people interpreted this. We'd have to say, no, 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 no. He's saying, be still in this world of, of uproar and, and, and warfare and uh, ruin. And so be still in your thinking, God is in control. Trust in him. Read about him. Read about what he's done in, in his son, his son who has overcome the world. Trust in him. Are we still in our actions? I mean, this is a frantic place. You got a lot on. Can we be still as we do our papers, go to chapel, do our you know, church duties, etc.? Are we still in our relationships? I want to tell you, hopefully this is going to work, I want to tell you about this guy. That, my friends, is Roger. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right slide here. I didn't know Roger. Roger was one of those youth group kids who, who just kind of showed up. Uh, if you've done youth ministry, you, you know that you get these kids that are committed, you get these kids that are kind of committed, you get these kids on the periphery, and then you get these kids that just kind of show up and they say, this is Roger, and you're like, oh, hello, Roger, how are you? I decided to take a group of young people. Now, it's a little hard to see. I don't know if I can, here we go. I decided to go from Sydney, Australia, up to there. That's a long way. It's 2,000 kilometers. And so I decided to drive them up on a bus, and we were going to go to, let me just see if I got it here, let me make sure I got it. We were going to go to that place, Queensland, Australia. The, the slogan for Queensland is beautiful one day, perfect the next. <laughs> and so a friend said, can I bring a friend of mine named Roger? And I said, yeah, more the merrier, bring Roger. And so that place is that island, okay? Now that island is a combination of paradise and hell. Because it's paradise because of, of that, and, and I didn't show you what you're looking at when you're sitting on that beach, but you're looking at this magnificent other island. It's just, it's warm and it's humid and it's just fantastic. And, However, those things live on that island. So you've got these green ants 
These green ants that love human flesh. So you just go up and lean on a tree. Oh, nasty little critters. Result of the fall. You've got that extremely venomous thing called a tiger snake. They're not nice. You got these great dinosaurs that are, that are, that are massive. They're called goannas. And they're massive and they're hungry. Now they don't eat us, but they look for our food. That's kind of the best of the, of the lot right there, that, that goanna. And then you've got that guy. I wonder if he's the worst. That's a gimpy bush. According to virologist Dr. Mike Leahy, the first thing you'll feel is a really intense burning sensation, and this grows over the next half hour, becoming more and more painful. Shortly after this, your joints may ache, and you might get swelling under your armpits, which can be almost as painful as the original sting. In severe cases, this can lead to shock and even death. And if you don't remove all the hair from your skin, they, keep, they can keep releasing the tortuous toxins for up to a year. We are sitting on the beach. There's about 18 of us. We're sitting on the beach. It's perfect. Ah, it's fantastic. Ah, I'd like to be there right now. Ah. Roger's at the end. And Roger gets up and he says, I'm going for a walk. And we all say, See ya, Roger. That's 12 o'clock noon. We have lunch. There's no Roger. And his friend says, oh, Roger's not here. And I said, listen, let's not worry. He's just probably enjoying the island. Uh, let's not worry. Five o'clock. Roger's not here. And I do this. Uh, so I go to the caretaker of the island, or the resort that we're at, and I, his name was Hans. And I say, Hans, uh, we've got a kid who's gone. And Hans goes, uh, and he says, I, I, I have to make a call. He says, I want your team here. I want everybody here at five in the morning. He goes and calls search and rescue. At five in the morning, we're all there, and our goal is to walk up a mountain and down the mountain. Up the mountain and down the mountain, all the time going, Roger, Roger, hey, Roger, Roger. No Roger. At noon, people start to stream in. Boats, uh, an aircraft comes. There's 120 people land on the island. And the, uh, the head of the rescue says to me, I don't want your team anymore, I just want the best guys. And so we all do the same thing, we go up and we go down. Now Roger has been gone for a night. At around um, four in the afternoon, he says, okay, the, 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 the search has shifted and we now have to lift up logs and look in holes. It's now a body search. Now the whole time I'm going, I'm, I'm searching and I'm going back and I'm calling Roger's parents. Now this is before cell phones. I'm using a radio. So I'm, I'm, they're patching the radio through to their phone. And I say to these people whom I've never met, your son has gone for a walk and he hasn't come back. Now what was interesting was they weren't all that shocked by the thing. It was like, well, that's, that's Roger. So I call them about every two hours with an update. Haven't found him, haven't found him. The next morning, so he has now been gone two nights. The next morning, they, they start to scale down the search and it becomes a little bit more body intensive. We are now looking for a dead body. And I've got to say this to Roger's parents. The search has changed. And I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm in, I'm in youth worker, I'm in the pit. I've been, a, I've been a youth minister now for four years, five years. Now, I'm not young, I'm, I'm 29, but, but I haven't done this all that long. And I'm like, my career's over. Like, it's pretty clear when you kill a kid, your career is over. <laughs> And I'm standing there with my friend Bruce. Bruce is this big red-haired guy, and just a terrific guy, terrific friend. And you've, many of you have been like this. You're sweating, and you've just got streaks of dirt you know, coming down, and you're just grimy, and I've got ants on my arm. And of course, of course, I'm the guy who swipes next to a gimpy bush. Of course, it's me, and fortunately very small, but I'm in, I'm in agony, and it actually hurt for about the next four months. And, and I said to Bruce, brother, it, it doesn't get any worse than this. In, in youth ministry, this is as bad as it gets. And it's not even the kind of situation where you can laugh about. Yeah, we're just like, and we're up on a hill. And what I didn't know was happening was another leader got our, t our group together to pray. And in their prayers, they began to sing. And what song did they sing? God is our strength and refuge, our present help in trouble. And I, I don't actually think it was supernatural, but it might have been. Bruce and I are standing there just like, oh, and this song just comes up. It just comes up, and it's like, a, it's like a cloud of hope that just comes up and swirls around us. And I've got to remember, even though the earth melts and is in chaos, God, our Lord, is there, and there is a river of hope that is flowing through it. The caretaker says, um, I'm going put to put this on for you. The caretaker says, Boys, the search is over. It's now day three. Search is gone. And uh, he says, Ken, you've got to call his parents. And you've got to tell them the search is over. Roger is dead. Now, I've never made a phone call like that. I don't ever want to make a phone call like that again. So I go into the kind of hut, and I patch the call through with the radio telephone thing. And in God's great mercy, his parents weren't home. And so I'm like, okay. It's a little bit like, uh, you know, going to get a, a shot. And he says, oh, we'll do it later. You're like, yes, I still have to do it. So I'm sitting on the beach, this beautiful beach. I'm covered in grime. And I'm sitting there. I wish somebody would have taken a picture of me because I'm just sitting there in paradise like this. And then we hear the words. We found him. We found him. What? And so Roger, now this illustration may not mean a lot to some of you, but it will to the older crowd. Roger thought he was on Gilligan's Island. That's where he thought. He thought he was on this, you know, three-hour tour that he could just walk around. That's a very limited illustration that I just used there. I just realized that. But he thought he could walk around. This island is so massive that a plane crashed in 1950, and they never found the wreckage. That's how big this place is. It is hard to describe what a chaotic island it is with dead trees and stuff. Did Roger think about turning back and going, nope. And so Roger described his two nights. He said he couldn't sleep because he kept hearing things around him. <laughs> he tried to start a fire with his glasses. That's really hard to do. <laughs> he was drinking water that was falling off leaves. You know, it was like, whoa. And he walks up to a, 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 a rental yacht and he says, could you make me a sandwich? <laughs> and they say, are you Roger? And he says, yes. 
We found Roger. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not exaggerating, there was this massive search and rescue speedboat. And it, it went around about, oh, a fifth of the island in like 40 seconds. It was full throttle. And it went and picked him up. And I'm so thankful that somebody took a picture. And there's the leaders of the rescue. Uh, I'm, I'm running. I'm kind of running up from that side. I've been sitting on the beach. I'm, I'm running up. And Roger is saying, other than some scratches, I'm okay. That's what he's doing. Thank you, Jesus.